We're gonna start today. Thanks everyone for joining. So we have a very, very special session today with the general admission people, Decibel Quest. I'm very, very excited today. We have today we have three different guests. So we have Megan, Adam, and Zach. And I'm just gonna start with you, Megan. Please leave the floor and present yourself. Thank Hi you. everyone, it is so good to be back with the Bud Tenders Association group. I hope you guys are all doing so, so great. Uh, so thrilled today that I actually have some of my amazing team here with me today to be able to talk to you guys all about the newest, the best innovation from general admission that's launching the Blinker. Uh, so leading the charge today is going to be Adam. So Adam is here so he can introduce himself and really what we really want to see too is Ben. That's really what we want to see. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, super pumped to uh, to share with you, uh, you know, some fun stuff from uh, from GA and um, get your feedback most importantly as well, because uh, we're about to launch and, um, you know, really excited to hear what you have to have to say and think about uh, about this product. And then uh, who else is here from Team Decibel is Zach. Zach, why don't you introduce yourself to the group? Hey team, uh, I'm from the, uh, the marketing department here at, uh, at Decibel, you know, rep in Quest and, and Box and general admission, which we're here to talk about today. So uh, I have the fun job of creating all the great uh, content to, to get out in front of you and in front of uh, all of our customers and uh, just here to uh, see what you guys think about all the great stuff coming from general admission and how we can work with you to, you know, create the best cannabis industry possible. Amazing. Thank you so, so much. So to let you guys know kind of what we're going to be doing today, we're going to take you through a little bit of a presentation, uh, give you a bit of the understanding and the why behind why we are tackling uh, closed loop technology and some of the reasons why we believe that GA is going to be the one to do it, uh, as well as take you through some of the technology in the pod. Would love if any of you guys did receive the Blinker and Pod as a sample, if you could just drop in the chat, say, hey, I got it, just so that we know that there's a couple of people on the call. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to take you through the technology and then take you through some of the amazing flavors. And then Zach's going to finish it off uh, with showing us some of the amazing uh, display material that's going to be available to your retailers. So without further ado, probably, Adam, you can kick it off. Okay. Uh, awesome. I'm, uh, once again, thanks, thanks for your time and attention on a Thursday evening. Uh, super excited to, uh, talk to you a little bit about Blinker. So as, uh, let's just, there we go. Uh, as Megan said, want to talk a little bit about sort of the insight, the reasons why, why we believe now is the right time. Um, and a little bit of our kind of strategy behind it. I'm not going to bore you with pages and pages and pages of boring stuff. Uh, really just the highlights and then we'll get right into the product uh, and, and how we intend to kind of support this launch. As we know, um, you know, it's a lot of heavy lifting. So if that sounds good to everybody, let's get right into it. And, you know, as we get into insights, I think one thing I just kind of want to level set uh, about is, you know, the vape category is hard. It's a hard category, just like most categories in cannabis. Um, but I think as we've taken a step back and, and been able to be part of a leadership position in the category for, you know, several months now, you know, thinking about what the future looks like, um, you know, and it's really hard for us to think about, you know, a really kind of advanced future in vape still sitting with 510, um, you know, and also how you can be remain competitive and um, actually provide more value to the consumer. And so, um, one of the first places that we looked to was the U.S. And, you know, I know there's been a lot of LPs, a lot of brands, you know, that have tried to look at the U.S. and say, oh, this worked in California, Colorado. It's definitely going to work in Canada. And then it falls on its ass. Well, I'm not going to say that the whole strategy is built on just this one slide or this one insight. But I think what it did was it gave us the insight to be more curious about a closed loop system. Um, and so what we have here is just some data out of California. 
And basically what it showed us is, you know, five years ago, five, six years ago, um, 510 was basically where we're at in Canada. It was basically 95, 97% of the overall category. Um, you know, fast forward into the end of 22 and, and as well into 23, um, that world has definitely changed. Um, the vape category now is about 40% pod systems in California. Um, and they're really led by two big brands. So Steezy and Plug and Play um, are the, you know, the biggest in, um, you know, that category. Um, with Steezy actually taking about 26% market share in California in vape. And so the interesting thing about Steezy is they didn't have a really a brand that they kind of started with in 510 and then went into kind of a pod system. They really actually started from scratch, um, you know, and that's how they kind of introduced themselves to the cannabis world in California. Similar story with plug and play. And so, you know, that kind of insight and that sort of piece of data, I guess, really got us thinking of like, that's a curious thought. How can we maybe think about five, uh, think about closed loop in relation to 510 in Canada um, and try and understand it a little bit better? Um, I think what we know and have seen is that there's, you know, a more openness and a growing demand for a better vape solution. Um, you know, in Canada, after five or six years of 510s, um, the pod system generally are a better and more reliable technology for the consumer as well as for a retailer. Um, but we also know that the 510 business will continue. So this is not general mission, throwing the baby out with the bathwater and saying, we're out of 510 and we're only going closed loop. Um, you know, it is going to be complementary to our vape sort of portfolio. Um, but it's something that we felt like it was going to be a really good thing to explore. And so this is kind of how we looked at the overall kind of vape category in 510 there's a ton of benefit, right? It's very easy for a consumer to come in, you know, basically purchase any cart and toss it into their battery and away they go. It's a universal solution that is widely adopted and fairly economical, especially where price points are today. The drawbacks, as we all know, is the technology is kind of shit, right? It's like 20, 25 years old. It's very inconsistent. It's very unreliable. You've got sort of like the mechanical issue with the technology itself. And then let's be real, you've got a lot of user issues or user errors that cause a lot of those malfunctions within the cards themselves. And so really that plus like, as we think about it as a brand and trying to grow brand, you know, there's very little opportunity for differentiation, you know, especially in 510, which is very kind of, you know, price sensitive, you know, to invest and spend a whole bunch of money into a fancy new cartridge, uh, or something like that, when you're probably going to get the same result and then be less competitive price wise, didn't really feel like it made a ton of sense to us. Um, and then as like, as we kind of dive deeper in through it, I think this is no secret to anybody on the call, but you know, they're the number one complaint about product, um, basically everywhere, right? Um, you know, whether it's vapor production, flavor irregularity, leaking, clogging, um, you know, everything in between really what it leads to is very uncertain experience. And frankly, I think most like hardcore vape consumers or just general vape consumers just kind of accept the fact that maybe one in 10 aren't going to work, that you might get down to 30 or 25% of it left. And, you know, it may or may not, you know, go all the way through. Um, and yet the category remains strong. It remains growing. And not only that, it's also a category that is a lot easier for like an unexperienced or a new cannabis consumer to jump into. I don't think many new consumers, the first time they're going to, you know, embark on a cannabis journey, they're going to go out and buy, you know, an ounce of loud, right? Like they're, they're probably going to go into something that makes a little bit more sense is a little bit more approachable, whether it be a vape or an edible. Um, and that's what we've seen. And that's what kind of the data tells us. So I'm not sitting here and saying, hey, you know, this is going to grow the overall industry and it's going to you know, bring this many more consumers into the category. What I'm saying is that we've got consumers who are likely frustrated with their current solution. That's, you know, really inconsistent. And as we continue to recruit new cannabis consumers, vape is one of the more likely products uh, that they're going to sort of enter with or test out first. So that kind of, again, give us, OK, there's something here. So then we looked at, well, what the hell happened with all the previous systems and why have they failed? Um, and I think to us, there was kind of four really obvious answers. Um, and we've really tried to tailor our offering, um, you know, with these things in mind. And so the first off was timing, especially in the early days, 
there was very little experience in the category. There's very little experience in cannabis in general, right? Um, and so really there was consumers who were just pumped on, you know, having choice, being able to go into a store and, you know, choose from a whole bunch of different products. Um, there was no real brand recognition. There was no brands over the last, you know, especially four or five years ago that really had any credibility with the consumer or frankly, even with the retailer or the bud tender community, um, you know, and that world has changed. And so, you know, what we, you know, have heard and, and seen from consumers is that they're struggling with the inconsistencies. We as an LP and you as retail, you know, partners uh, and bud tenders also struggle with that inconsistency of the 510 experience and want something better. Um, and we've also got a brand in general mission that I think has built credibility over the last couple of years and been known to put up good quality products, having consistent innovation and, you know, a brand that consumers have come to know um, and have told us that they quite like us, um, thankfully. Um, and so we've got a great platform and starting from a place of trust, we feel like with the consumer um, to say if they're going to take a shot at something new like this, maybe they can trust those folks over at General Mission uh, to give it a go. Now, here's, I think, probably the rub here is one of the biggest things, and if not the biggest thing was price, right? You know, getting into a closed loop system, a proprietary system, um, you know, however you want to call it, uh, you know, definitely came at a cost, um, especially in the early days when, you know, even half gram carts were like 50 bucks off the shelf. Um, you know, looking at the cost of a battery, as well as the cost of a cart, you know, your comparison was probably about, you know, 100 to 120 bucks when you include battery in a pod or, or, or something like that for the pod system versus almost every brand was giving away 510 batteries basically um, in the early days and still to some degree. Um, and the cartridges themselves were a lot cheaper and still are. And so the entry point to get into the 510 system is way cheaper than it was and is to get into sort of a closed loop or more proprietary system. And so we've attacked that in kind of two ways, I think. First off is all of our carts are gonna be line priced with, um, or all of our pods, sorry, are gonna be line priced with our carts. So if you're a retailer in Ontario, you're paying $23.99 for uh, a single unit of uh, General Mission 510, you're gonna pay the exact same for a single unit uh, of general emission pods. Um, similarly, our batteries are not going to be expensive. Um, you know, we're going to launch with lots of promotions and programs, but at most, a retailer is going to pay $10 for our battery, meaning that they can achieve a 50% margin and still price it under 20 bucks. So, you know, pretty reasonable when you look at sort of the, the little bit higher quality 510 batteries out there. So just kind of that that medium tier, we're right in line with that and allowing sort of a retailer to make um, the higher margin in accessories that uh, that they're looking to achieve. And so what we've tried to accomplish is basically for a consumer, it's no more expensive to get into our closed loop blinker system with a pod and a battery than it would into the 510 system. So sort of removing that barrier of it being way more expensive uh, and way more difficult to sort of um, rationalize, I guess. The last piece of this on price, which is kind of related and will relate to the next slide as well, is all of the units or all the cases are gonna be six unit master cases. So in order, whether it's a battery, a pod, or one of our mix pack products, um, you're not gonna have to shell out a whole bunch of money to invest in the whole portfolio that we're rolling out at first. So basically to get a couple of cases of batteries and all four or five SKUs, no matter what province, you're gonna be spending under $900 to get the full setup to launch. Um, and, and we feel like that's a pretty approachable sort of price point, um, especially considering you'd be getting five or six different SKUs um, within that overall port, within that kind of overall spend. Second to last here is the lineup. You need to have choice. Consumers are like a lot like my, my dog, Ted. They've got a short attention span. Uh, always looking for that new thing, that new tasty treat. Um, you know, we've done a really good job, I think, at GA of always coming up with sort of, you know, new and interesting flavors, keeping the rotation fresh, um, you know, and, and interesting. Um, and previous sort of brands just did not have enough selection. They've got one or two flavors. Um, and if you don't like those, well, then why would you go into that system, right? And so what we've been able to accomplish on launch is being able to launch with up to 11 flavors um, right out of the gate. And how we've accomplished that 
is with uh, three single strain, like one gram pods, and then two mixer packs that have four different flavors in each. And so what that has enabled us to do is one, if I go to the OCS or the BCLDB or AGLC and say, hey, I need 11 SKUs right out the gate. I mean, they'd call me crazy and probably walk me out. Um, and so I had to manage the ask in terms of the number of listings that we actually got, but how do you maximize you know, the number of uh, flavors that you can offer? The other nice thing about our mixer packs is just like our Disney infused mixer pack, we don't have to change the listing every time we want to change up the flavor. So we can constantly bring new flavors, test new flavors, that kind of thing, um, and keep that rotation fresh that we know is so important. So, you know, really, I think, you know, coming with our heavy hitters, uh, I bet you all can guess what a few other flavors will be in the single strain to give us the best chance. Um, and, and really sort of the assortment that consumers have shown that they're pretty big fans of. And then lastly is just the distribution opportunity, right? I think for this to work, we are we have to, the challenge that we have and we as Indecible has on this is we got to change consumer behavior. That's a hard thing to do, right? You got to change them from their tried and, well, their tried, maybe not true, 510 setup, uh, and go ahead and, and get one of these guys, um, you know, out there. And so you can't have the pod without the battery. Um, and you need to have convenience when it comes to where your distribution is. So we're fortunate enough that we've got pretty great distribution of general mission products in most retailers across the country. And there's just a lot more retailers, um, you know, out there that are, you know, well known to generally to consumers, a lot more sophisticated as well. Um, in you know, not learning the ropes of the cannabis industry and really, you know, looking to kind of continue to build that business. So I think timing and the general state of how much and, and how accessible cannabis is now in Canada, um, you know, really gives us that extra reason to believe that this can be successful. So that's a little bit of the why, that's a bit of our thought process, how we're thinking about a bunch of the challenges that came out or, or have occurred with, you know, previous sort of proprietary or closed loop systems. Um, and so with, without kind of further ado, I've got a bit of a video I'm going to share just to be, give you a bit of a sense. Oops, I almost didn't play it. Just to give you a bit of a sense, um, you know, of what the Blinker is all about, how it works. And while this is playing, um, because I always find videos without music, uh, is kind of awkward. So I'm going to talk over it a little bit. Um, but the most wonderful, uh, and just such a beautiful human being, Miss Megan Larson is going to take you through the technology, how it works, why it's important, and as well, some of the flavors that we're going to be coming out with very, very shortly. So with that said, I'm going to pass it over to Miss Larson and uh, she's going to take it from here. Amazing. Thank you so much, Adam. You know, I just, I am so, so thankful that uh, you have shared with us and truly when I first found out about this information, I thought that finding out about stuff that goes on the, in the United States cannabis market, so helpful to help understand what's happening here in Canada. And thank you to everybody who's been, um, going in the chats and, and asking some questions. I'm hopefully going to be answering a few questions right now. One of the first questions though, that I want to address is, will this work with tax pods? Great question. So closed loop technology, one of the best ways that I like to think about it is Apple. So when you have an Apple monitor, you need an Apple keyboard and an Apple mouse. And so it's that sort of closed loop technology. It all works together. And so it's going to be the same system for us. In order to smoke and vape the general admission pod, you will need to have the blinker battery. So let's talk a little bit about the incredible technology with it. So it is smart pod technology that is perfectly tuned for your experience. So what basically happens is uh, the pod communicates to the battery that it is in fact a distillate pod. And so it sets it perfectly for the right temperature that we believe that distillate should be vaped at for the optimal flavor and for the best, biggest clouds possible. The other thing too that I saw another question in the chat is what about live resin? Definitely, this is on our radar and hopefully something coming in the new year. I see I see nodding from Adam. And so basically, it'll be the same thing. When it's a live resin pod, it will communicate to the battery, I'm a live resin pod, and then change the temperature accordingly. So what this means is there's no more preheating, no more temperature settings, no more tapping, like how many times to go on and between different settings. 
This is going to reduce clogging, leaking, sputtering for the best flavor that you have ever tried. If you thought Tiger Blood was good before, Lord alive, it is just dynamite. So that is a little bit about the Smart Pod technology. On the second page, uh, we're going to talk about inhalation activation. So once again, there are absolutely no buttons on the blinker. Thank goodness. All that you do is you slip in the pod. And as you may be able to hear that sort of clicking, so it's actually magnetic. And so it's not going to come out. And so all that's all that you got to do is click in, blink out, inhale, and, uh, and away you go. And it does have some of the biggest clouds that I have ever seen. So I know for myself, when carts first came out back in 2000, and I guess it would be 19, right, is when 2.0 first came out. It was like we were wanting those big same clouds that the nicotine vapes had, right? And it wasn't the same. And so this is just such a cool solution. And I just absolutely love it. So yeah, inhale and away you go. I also saw another question about like, do you have to haul on it quite a bit in order to get high? I will say uh, we actually had some people at Lit Research last night. Hey, Adam. And one of the gals said, she said, I tried to write feedback, but all I wrote is got so high because she didn't realize <laughs> how intense it is. And I think, too, once you get a chance to experience it, the airflow and how smooth it is, you almost forget that you're vaping THC and so I find I do experience a much quicker onset and a more intense high than a regular 510 cart for sure I so, I, I had to try right away when you say the cloud just need yeah. a blinker I don't know if you saw the smoke but that was pretty heavy and for a blinker it's very smooth very 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 good job and, amazing uh, I have a quick question for you would you guys mind sharing yes. What do you think is the temperature, the best for distillate? What is the temperature? It's the setup, oh. it is totally um, priority. Oh, that's actually, a great question. I, I don't know. That's a great question. Um, I actually don't know that off the top yeah. of my head. Um, I uh, will have to get back to you on that one. I'm not 100% yeah. sure what, uh, what we've tuned it up. I mean, what I do know is that um, so we're working directly with the manufacturer. So this isn't through sort of an intermediary. And one of the very cool things about them as well, it's actually the same manufacturers that Steezy uses. They also have a lab that has enabled us to send filled pods um, of our specific distillate. So they've actually tuned it up, uh, you know, to try and optimize vapor production as well as flavor, as mm -hmm. well as sort of like, you know, longevity of the oil, so to speak, if that makes sense, so you're not burning yeah. through it too fast or too slowly. Um, and so it's been tuned up, you know, really well. I mean, the ultimate will be for live resin. I mean, I'm a big live resin babe guy. That's kind of my preferred choice, um, you know, and, and so I've been, you know, wanting a live resin pod for a while, but I think we all know, unfortunately, distillate sort of, you know, is the champ when it comes to volume and vape. And so we wanted to start with that. And then uh, as soon as, uh, as soon as we can, uh, we're going to fire up some live resin pods uh, and, uh, and I, I will be a happy camper. Yeah, you'll be happy. And if you want a little uh, recommendation, sure. um, I don't know if you know, but Health Canada already did a first warning about the fact that they had no data on inhalation of all the uh, flavoring agents like ter botanical terpenes and esters and stuff like that. So they might be banning it soon. So you, you might want to jump on that live resin uh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, we've, I mean, that's a, that's a whole other discussion for a whole other day, but we've been very live to what's been going on and have some pretty nice, uh, contingency plans, we'll say to, to be able to continue to offer some awesome products and, uh, and stay compliant with what we think, you know, could be a real change in the future for sure. But awesome call out for sure. That's so yeah. good. Awesome. awesome. So the other thing that you guys are probably wondering too, okay, so this battery, how good is it? So it is one about 150 hauls. Now, I know that that might seem like a big number or a small number to some, it all depends. Here's what I'm gonna say for myself, if I'm hitting it like all day, every day over like a weekend, I definitely don't run out of battery by the end of the weekend. Um, and so I think it all depends on, you know, how quickly, you know, you vape or how much you vape throughout the day. But I will say it, is one of those batteries so far for me that I've had where 
you know the batteries where you're like oh man i need to charge it again already oh, okay got it right it's definitely not one of those types of experiences so i think that when uh, i've only actually drained the battery once or twice i think twice so far since testing it which is pretty incredible so again depends on how how often you use or how much you vape um but i think that you're going to be really pleased uh with how long it actually does last the other thing too is that uh in the box and axel i know that you said that you maybe wanted to do a little bit of an unboxing for uh everybody is that it does actually come with a USB-C charging cable. So we wanted to go for that, you know, universal cable. There it is. So it's just a little guy uh, to be able to plug in and uh, and away you go. So I don't know, Axel, actually, yes, would you like to, to show it? But... Oh, excellent. Excellent. I've been seeing a few. I think we have a nice was... little display box. And then it's a beautiful, like a book. You just open it. I'm going to put back my blinker in there. So this is where you have your blinker. And then if you pop it open, yeah. you have the instruction right in the back. And you also yeah. have the charger popping at the back. And I love it. the charger idea because I always hated the 510 when you have to screw on the USB. And then uh -huh. I always hated it. So, right. And, right. and the fact, too, is that it's USB-C, right? And I think a lot of us, and apparently Apple is converting to USB-C and all of the Android users are just laughing. Uh, yes. But anyway, that's fine. That's it's, fine. It's because of uh, Europe. They, they pass a law where basically they want the same standard uh, charger everywhere in Europe. Oh. So anyone that wants to export in Europe has to fit the USB-C. That's why. You just taught me something new, Axel. Fabulous. Exactly. Thank you for letting me know that. I love that. So thank you so much, too, for showing off the box. You know, we really wanted uh, something as well for you to be able to hold your, you know, your uh, charging cable, for you to be able to hold your battery, hold maybe extra pods that you might have, too. You know, you can put everything in that box as well. So there you go. That's a little bit about the battery technology. Definitely, if you guys have any questions, uh, I, I've noticed a few other questions have come up. I think I saw something. Does it only come in black? It will not. It does for now. This will be the standard design, but I think we're going to go over uh, some other designs that we have too. Excellent. So let's talk about the flavors, right? So as Adam has already mentioned and alluded to, we are going to have 11 flavors to launch, which is so, so exciting. So we know Tiger Blood is just forever and always going to be absolutely a heavyweight up there to Peach Rings, Grapey Grape, Blue Rocket. So let's go into what we are going to be having for our initial assortment of flavors. Tiger Blood for the win. There ain't nothing like our Tiger Blood, hey? Just incredible. Yes. So there you go. So we are launching... Five Loco, Tiger Blood, and Peach Riz all in full 0.95. And we are also doing mixer packs. Unreal. You know that we love a taster pack for our infused pre-rolls. So we're bringing that same sort of uh, idea and vibe to our pods. Uh, so that's also another really exciting thing uh, that I've heard really great feedback so far in particular is that on launch we are launching three full gram pods so we've got our 0.95s and just to let you guys know too in case you guys don't know why we do 0.95 we do that slight bit of what's called negative headspace to really uh prevent clogging and leaking of our carts and also now for our pods but this is some really great feedback that i've received from people saying you know uh some of the thing with the other pod systems is that they only ever came out with half gram pods so now the fact that we have our full grams, I think is going to get people really excited. And then if you're like, well, you know, for, if for some reason someone does not actually like one of those three flavors, which would be pretty surprising to me, we are also going to have other mixer packs. So yeah, so we'll go into each of the flavors, I guess here we've got our peach Riz, just in case you guys haven't seen or known peach rings got a makeover. And yes, it is indeed now going to be called peach Riz. Um, I think for the majority of you on the call know that Riz means charisma, uh, but I had to have a young man uh, explain that to me the other day because I did not know. So and for anybody else who didn't know what a Riz was, it's charisma. So there we go. Peach Riz. We've got our Tiger Blood forever and for always. And then we also have our Five Loco. This one, I think uh, for me personally, 
Grapey Grape and Five Loco, I think, are really coming into the arena and go going to be giving Tiger Blood and Peach Riz a run for their money. But this Five Loco is this stunning cherry blaster, cherry and lime flavor that is just divine and such a nice sativa offering. And then let's go into what's going to be, be in each of the mixer packs. So the first one is our essentials mixer pack. So again, we've got our, you know, for the sativa divas in the house, we're going to have the peach riz and the five loco. And then we're also going to have mango chew and blue rocket as the indica offerings. If you've never tried mango chew, uh, it tastes like a mango high chew candy. Absolutely delicious. And blue rocket is like the blue raspberry of your dreams. And then our next mixer pack, is that okay if you don't like those flavors well maybe you'll like these ones so we've got minted we've got tiger blood grapey grape and watermelon splash so really i think such a fantastic offering and if i sorry i don't know if i mentioned this so each of these are going to be 0.28 pods so you're going to be getting uh about i think it's 1.2 grams uh worth in each pack so if you really want to taste the rainbow you're going to be able to by getting both mixer packs um, because there's unique flavors in each of them as well. So yeah, and just to just to add on, the reason 0.28 sounds very strange as well, um, <laughs> but it allows us to stay just under. It's like 1.1, 1. 1, what is it, 1.12 grams uh, of distillate, and it allows us to get up to over 90% THC. Um, so staying under the 1,000 milligrams, um, and, and being able to be transparent about the potency of, of every cart that's in there, uh, but staying within uh, that thousand milligram cap. So that is the reason for the 0.28. And, um, you know, it, uh, I actually have a one gram on me. I wonder if I have a, if I have a, uh, a 0.28. So it's the same size pod. And you might not be able to see this, but basically it's just the inner reservoir that's filled versus the full reservoir. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of got an oh. air but you can kind of see that there's an inner reservoir and an outer and that's yeah. just kind of how it works. So um, no, no difference, no change in settings, just uh, a bit of a different way of filling the pot. So that's, uh, that's what that is. Amazing. Thank you, Adam. I see a lot of people are excited about the different flavors, MSRP for the batteries. Uh, so most retailers were going to recommend probably 1499 to 1999 um, to start. And I think that uh, that's going to be really great. But I think that's probably where most retailers are going to live is in that 15 to $20 range. Yeah, I think on the low end, I mean, depending on margin goal of, of yeah. the retailer, I think most retailers tend to take a bit more margin on accessories. So um, with 50% kind of being like around where it's at. So we wanted to mm -hmm. price, we want to be below 20 bucks for sure. Totally. Uh, you know, and, and there'll be lots of, there's, a lot more fun things that you can do uh, with non-cannabis products like batteries uh, mm -hmm. than you can cannabis products. So there'll be deals out there, especially on launch for very affordable batteries, we'll say, um, to encourage even, uh, you know, even more uptake. You got it. And uh, Beth actually just had a great question, Adam. Will we have a pack that has the battery and pod together or will they only be sold separately? So really good question. And we had some serious debate about this item um and do we do a kit as a skew or not and where we landed with this was listings with the boards are very tough whether it's bc or alberta or ontario um you know they're difficult and they're few and far between and so we didn't want to use up a listing on a skew that we thought might become irrelevant after you know four or five months and also kind of the sticker price on that can, you know, be a bit unattractive, um, you know, especially out of the gate. And so we know that in order to continue to build our assortment, um, you know, with the boards, which we know is important, we're going to have to prove that each one of these SKUs is a performer. Um, mm -hmm. And we just weren't as confident looking even back at the data from, you know, 2019, I guess, which is legalization of like 2.0. Um, lots of kits were out there, not many really lasted or sold. Um, and so being very aggressive with battery samples, battery pricing, mm -hmm. and battery availability, we felt like that was the better strategy and not use up a board listing with, with a kit that would become irrelevant, you know, uh, after a few months. And so I, I think you can easily argue that it would make a ton of sense to have a kit um, I think, you know, where we just landed on it was um, we wanted to be very confident in our ability to distribute batteries, get them out there, 
Uh, yeah. and then have uh, have the heavy the heavy hitters there stand on their own. So great question and something we thought long and hard about. Totally. And who knows, maybe, you know, if in the future I saw someone say maybe uh, for Christmas, you know, maybe there might be a time in the future where we do launch like a limited edition kit sort of idea or whatever. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really great to see that they're sort of separate for now. Um, but definitely noted, I do know those Feather Vape kits uh, as well. And I know that they do very well. And awesome. And will you be list listing the vape on the, on the wholesale website too? Or just... Uh... Yeah, yeah, great, great question. So um, OCS and the BCLDB will be selling the batteries, um, you know, through wholesale. So pretty simple if you're a BC or Ontario retailer. Mm -hmm. um, in Saskatchewan, um, Open Fields will be uh, distributing. And then nationwide, Humble and Fume uh, will be also distributing um, the batteries. So yeah. you've got lots of options on where to go and how to get batteries. Um, so, you know, whether you're a humble and fume customer or otherwise, um, you know, you can get it from your, you know, mostly your distributor, um, you know, or, uh, or, or from, uh, from our partners over at humble. So that's, uh, that's how you get the batteries. You got it. Yeah. Really great questions, you guys. Um, and I just want to say as well, like my personal experience with, uh, with the tiger blood so far is. Like I said before, I, I just don't think that I knew that distillate could taste this good. It is so smooth. It is so, a word that I heard last night from someone is delicate um, because it really does not feel as harsh. You know, I think for a look at that cloud, Axel, hey? like oh, you wanna, I can do a blinker if you want. <laughs> yeah? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> okay. There it oh. is. Well, that'll wow. do it. <laughs> that will do it. Okay. <laughs> Pretty heavy. I have to say, yeah, it doesn't have that like bitter, like I call it the hot dog water aftertaste of the distillate. Mm. You know? mm. Yeah. And I think that's one of the nice things about this, right? Is like the the chip technology, like kind of will. It's it's not it's not going to eliminate it, everything, but it kind of you know makes it so. You don't have the opportunity or less of an opportunity kind of, you know, to, you know, burn the coil. And then once you burn a coil in a pod, you're hooped. It's just burn popcorn for the rest of uh, rest of your days in that pod. Um, and so it's kind of it, it helps that uh, it helps kind of reduce some of those, you know, things, especially for the, the, the heavier user, um, you know, to, uh, you know, it, it kind of self protects a little bit. So it's, it's nice from that standpoint. Let's talk about how we're going to get this to you. So we understand the biggest point of friction is getting the battery into the folks' hands, right? And we want to eliminate that. And so we are on a mission to get out 10,000 battery samples to bud tenders and customers through all the avenues that we possibly can get. So anyone on this call who's got a sample, if you don't have a sample, let's figure out a way to hook you up. We got these everywhere. We even have these special limited edition SKUs. I think I saw some color chat in the... Uh, uh, earlier and we've got what we're calling blue waves and pink uh, purple sunset here so give you a little bit of variety a little bit of spice if you want to rock these limited edition uh, blinkers and we will also uh, be coming out with other interesting battery colors in the future so this system uh, we're really trying to integrate with you guys at retail as deeply as possible get these samples out to you so that way you can preach this to your customers you can understand the system and you can experience this and not just hear it on this call uh, and that when you're out uh, out there with your friends, you're rocking your own uh, style in the battery. And we're gonna be all, all over the place with events and activations uh, come uh, the back half this year when Blinker drops. So look for the GA uh, rep or booth at the local uh, event near you and uh, come tell us how, how much you love the Blinker. And if you haven't got one yet, come get one. So we've already done the unboxing. Here I was gonna show you some of this beautiful packaging, but uh, it is it is quite nice, it's quite slick. I think that the little tip about using the open box to hide some pods, you can get about four pods in here. Or if you got anything else you wanna stash, it's really nice, got a little magnetic clasp, uh, just like the magnetic clip on the blinker itself. 
The master case is also branded, so it's going to be very easy for you to find Blinker all throughout the back of your house. Uh, no problem at all. And we also have a full landing page digital experience. So if you want to learn any more about Blinker or if your customers are more interested, uh, we have it up on our general admission website. Uh, that way you can deep dive into some of those uh, text features. We have a full FAQ guide on there. You can download the user manual. You can get deep into the tech. Uh, and if you have any questions we haven't answered there, you can drop us a line straight in the contact form and, and, and ask anything that you like from us. But again, it's really about the feel. I don't know about you, but I'm a little fidgety. What I like about this is it's got this really nice haptic feedback. I just kind of click it around and play with it. It feels yes. super nice. I think that is like the reason to believe. Once you have this in your hand, you feel how discreet it is, how easy it is. It really sells uh, the experience. I think that's super important, not only for you, but for your customers. So part of our trade uh, strategy is actually getting blinkers captured onto these systems. So that way, uh, when you're talking about this with customers in your store, they can pull it, they can feel how this integrates. Now, we all know that this is maybe something that might walk away one day. So we've got a nice device capture system on there to keep these home so they don't go too far afield. Uh, and also a great place to uh, put in uh, sample cards about whatever flavors your store is rotating in and out for Blinker pods. So that way it's a one-stop shop to help your customers educate themselves on the system to really make your job easier when you're having this conversation at the point of sale and you have something to reference with them or maybe they've done a little bit of self-service shopping they've already connected with this and they know what they want and they're coming to you with a little bit of those second level questions on uh, on making a purchase and this system scales we've got it in a bunch of different sizes and shapes we've got very large standees boom right at the front of your store if you want to shout loud and proud about how much you love your blinker We've got smaller tech shelves uh, with the device capture system. You can keep it at the till. You can keep it in, you know, a, a cabinet, whatever your display systems are. Uh, we've got a lot of flexibility and our sales team is, uh, you know, active boots on the ground. They want to come in. They want to set up the best displays possible uh, and work with you on making sure that we get all the gear in here that helps you really uh, get your customers familiar with the system and and just makes this path to purchase for them and explaining it as easy as possible. So all, you know, everybody's just uh, tuned into the system and uh, ready to blink out. That's awesome. Yeah. Having interaction with the customers, like just in a display form, it's they just want to go and play with it. That's that's a good idea. That's all I do is play with this thing. Honestly, I, I don't know if you guys, you know, it's it's very, uh, it's it's got this really nice feel to it, and you know, the magnet doesn't go. It's nice. I think once you have it in your hand, that's really what makes you get the whole system and why uh, we feel it's a, it's a great alternative to five tens uh, for a lot of the reasons that we've unpacked here. Yeah, as I was telling Morgan yesterday, even the little like you know the design right here, the the brand, you know, it's a little nice logo. You know, what I'm saying it's very unique. And they're talking with the homie yesterday, you know, they're going to come up with different, like, flavors and it'll be different colors. So that's unique. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, someone is asking if you're going to do a flavorless one. A flavor uh, without flavor. Yes. Yeah. It's not in the, uh, so just straight distillate? Probably it's uh, it's already done in the market. There is like a 95% distillate only uh, or like triple distillate. Uh, already and p it goes like oh, crazy. Wow. People go really out of it. Interesting. Yeah. Something, something we could look at. So kind of like yeah. uh, like a huh. triple distilled vodka, but with distillate. <laughs> it's uh, you know for the very uneducated that thinks that the Mortiechi the highest they're gonna get. It's mm -hmm. the only option you can recommend nowadays. Yeah, I hadn't honestly hadn't really thought of that. Um, not sure about that one, but something we can try for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure neither. It's as, as someone who really loves like cannabis, it's not something I support, but sometimes you have to listen to the market, you know? For sure. Absolutely. What are some other thoughts, questions, musings? Um, I would love to hear. I'm sure a lot of people received it. I would love to hear some people. Yeah, feedback. yeah, that'd, yeah that'd be I'll great. Put it in the chat. Yeah, very smooth, nice, you know, uplifting. You know, it's there's not, no resistance. It just, it's get you like a, an instant kind of high you know we all we all enjoyed and experienced the good vibes yesterday at lit you know yes they, they put on a good, you for coming, good presentation you know it's all lit and excited for you guys still you know and it's always the best so yes and also just so you guys know like the battery charge on it you know it lasts again up to like 45 to 60 minutes you know if it dies for a full charge so that's good for everybody to know excellent you know? 
Yes, thank you for bringing that up, Dustin. Yes, someone did actually ask uh, yesterday at Lit Research how long it takes for it to charge if it's been completely drained. And uh, we're saying it's going to be about 45 minutes uh, for it to charge fully. That's a so really great wow. question. Would love to hear from some other peeps. I know I saw some people drop in the chat that they had a chance to try it. We would love to, to hear your voice if possible. No pressure for camera, but we'd love to hear from you. And any and all feedback, like, please, we want this. There's only one way for us to grow. So don't be afraid if there's a, a feedback that you feel is negative or constructive, you know? I just absolutely love this and I'm so thankful that I got one. So thank you so very much. Um, I have been writing so many notes. I'm going to my manager tomorrow and bringing this to her and telling her we're getting it in the store because I'm sold. Like this is so innovative and so new and I'm so excited by this. Oh, Allison, thank you so you much. That comment, no doubt. Amazing. I think Amazing. Coco, you raised your hand if you want to speak up. Thank you. Yeah, actually, I had mine clogged a little bit yesterday. And I, I'm going to say, in all fairness, I live in a very wet environment near the ocean, and I haven't had a great time that hasn't clogged on me yet. So, no, hey. no, no judgment there. <laughs> but I have to say, I was not a fan of the Tiger Blood as a joint. Um, I just wasn't, I, I, it was just too much for me. But this is so smooth. I'm so looking forward to getting all the flavors to try because this is really I, I'm a huge box pot fan but I still find a cough and this hits really nice I don't get the headache and it's, it's very very smooth and this is definitely how Tiger Blood should taste because this is amazing we love that thank you Coco where do you live I'm in Port Alberni Oh, yes. it is oh, yeah, there. so Where? there is oh. not a vape card that does not flood here. I don't care what anyone <laughs> says. I store them upright. I clean them out. I don't keep them in my pocket. You know, none of that stuff. So, and can yeah. I just say also, yeah. I work another job and you should not be safe in that work. But everyone thinks it's tobacco, so I'm just like, hey, see you guys later. With that being said, <laughs> are you guys thinking of going down the CBD or CBC route so that maybe mm -hmm. I won't go so at work all the time? Great call out. Are we going to start doing any sort of distillate with uh, minor cannabinoids? I, I think there's there's an obvious place that we go on some timeline, right? Um, you know, we've, we've started doing it with some of our edibles, right? With uh, We just launched the CBG and THC edible. We've got CBN, CB, uh, CBD. And, um, you know, I think there's uh, lots of opportunity um, there. Is, is, and I think we're starting to become more and more ready for that, um, which is great. So for certainly yeah. be, uh, on the list for sure. One of my favorite old school, I don't know if anybody remembers this, wasn't super widely distributed, but General Mission Lemon Ice was a one-to-one. -one, uh, it tastes like a lemon meringue pie uh, oh, cool. and it was dynamite. Um, <laughs> So if uh, that was like, I think the only sort of like, you know, minor cannabinoid product that we had, and it was a one to one, uh, real tasty um, and, and, and lovely product, but um, something that uh, I'd love to resurface along with uh, some other ratioed products. So definitely a great point. That. Appreciate your feedback, Coco. It's uh, the, the minor cannabinoid are, very, are getting very, very popular nowadays. So yeah, for sure. I think it was like 20 or 25 percent of edible sales in uh, BC was minor cannabinoid based. So I think wow. still BC, uh, but yeah, that's what the category manager mentioned to me the last time I spoke with him uh, a couple of weeks ago. He said it was like 20 or 25 percent now um, wow. in, in edible. So it's it's coming for sure. Yes. CBG, CBN, CBD are like super, super popular right now. Yeah. Yeah, I love hearing about that lemon ice. I didn't know that was in the decibel vault. It's oh, like the yeah. Disney vault, but the decibel yeah. vault, hey? Yeah. Drew, I thought, I thought I saw your hand up at some point. Oh, yeah. On the spot. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm a bud tender from Windsor, Ontario. I also work in uh, Tilbury, which is a small town about a half hour away. And I just wanted to talk about, you were saying, talking about like the CLT failed before versus the general admission opportunity now yeah. one of the pros we said was the comment or the 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 brand recognition and i can't tell you how true that is honestly general admission when it comes to a lot of vapes and especially infused 
in my stores is kind of like Kleenex. I'll have people come in and say, can I get some general admission? But they really mean like, can you bring out general admission and maybe a couple of other infused brands? They almost use general admission as infused, especially mm. in a smaller town. General admission just means infused kind of, which is funny. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say, um, I think this is going to go over really well. I went dark a couple of times. I, I was texting my managers and the owners at my store. I was like, guys, we got to get this in. So uh, great product, Rob. Thanks, Drew. Really appreciate that. October 19th is when it drops in Ontario. So. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. And he has drop in BC already? Uh, no, it's, it's yeah. And I, I mean, I think that's a fair segue. Um, so, I mean, we know the dates in, in Ontario, wave one of fall product hall, all five products. So four pod SKUs and then the battery will be available on October 19th. So that's locked and loaded. Um, the uh, BC will be the week of October 16th. So basically that same week. Um, Alberta will be on the November 3rd buy sheet um, is what that looks like. Uh, and then Saskatchewan uh, will be around sort of that same time, that like kind of third week of October. Uh, and then Manitoba will be sort of like middle of November, um, you know, for, for anybody from my hometown province. So um, that's kind of what it looks like Ontario West. Um, New Brunswick uh, is on the list, but, uh, but uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't part of the discussion so far. Uh, and, and then Quebec and Nova Scotia and Newfoundland are a little bit uh, tougher nuts to crack. You can't even do vape in Quebec, I wish. But uh, uh, anyways, that's kind of what uh, uh, kind of central Western Canada looked like from, from a timeline perspective. Do we have any more questions? Because then we have a quiz, I believe, for the end of the session. And do you have, Megan, do you have more presentation for us? No, that's it. We that's it end. for slides. I can uh, right. stop sharing too. But I would love for you to say what's what's the prizes if you if you do well at the quiz. You got it. So we are going to be giving away for this session five blinker batteries and tiger blood pods. So five lucky people on the call today are going to be able to win one of these, which is so so exciting. And. So, um, for your information, we will be announcing the winner by email uh, once we can verify all the answer, and then it's going to be announced by email tomorrow. I think we're going to get until like 5:20 for the for the end of the of the poll, and then. Either way, I'll join you. Nice. You ready? All right. Who wants to do a blinker with me? Cool. One. Yeah, Shall we? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Let's okay. Do it. Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we lost Megan. <laughs> and then bong rib, ready? Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> what was it, Megan? <laughs> Guys, I don't I don't think I blinked, but I blinked. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go! Oh yeah, for anybody who doesn't think that they're gonna get, uh, yeah, nighty night, Tim, you got it. Oh, I am stony below me now. <laughs> Thank you for uh, saving that for the end of our time Thank tonight. You. Thank you for blinking with me. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. That's amazing. Too funny. Uh, you got yeah. it. Do we have any last question while people finish the pool? Someone wants to share maybe feedback or some question? If, uh, if, if, if someone's not comfortable asking a question now or they have, uh, it looks like Beth had a question. Is that correct? Oh, Just reading the chat. Talk. Beth, if you're around still, please. You can unmute yourself. Sorry, the screen went black for me, so I wasn't sure if it was just my end or not. Um, I just had an issue with one of my general mission cartridges today. I was just wondering about contacting someone for that. Yeah, hundred percent. So, um, if yeah. uh, I mean one of one of two ways, and I mean this is great for everybody to know as well, and, and I'll tie it in. So, um, you know, on on the um, on the package, we've got our email, uh, which is I think just, uh, products or something like that. 
uh, at Westleaf Labs or whatever's on the uh, the package. It's uh, what is it? WL product at westleaf.com. Uh, you can just send us an email and we'll get you sorted out within 12 hours, basically. So, um, you know, please reach out. We've got that on the back of our blinker boxes on a pods and just for any of our products. Um, if anybody has, um, you know, sent in something to our customer service team, uh, we generally get back to people, you know, within hours um, and for sure within 24 hours. Um, and uh, and we sort people out uh, with uh, with full compensation. So uh, please reach out um, and, you know, if you want to hit us up directly, either myself or Megan uh, or Zach, we can we can also take care of you as well. Make sure you get in front of the uh, um, make, make sure you get in front of the the customer service team. So um, that's that's always our promise. Um, no matter what product, whether it's Quest, General Mission, Vox, or or anything in between, um, you know we stand by our products. We're super proud of them, uh, but we also are human, and sometimes things don't always go to plan. So um, you know we we always make sure to get back to people real quick and, and make sure they're compensated in full for it. I also just dropped my email into the chat, so of course please definitely email me, and we will get you in touch with our amazing customer service team, like Adam was alluding to. Yes, and I'm uh, still on okay. Mars. I have to. I had to deal with, and that was very efficient. So, good job on that, guys. That was amazing. Good. Glad to hear it. Great. All Just right. to give one last uh, contact point, I dropped it in the chat. Our general admission website. We got a contact form. Uh, drop a, uh, anything in there. Questions, comments, high fives. You know your uh, your favorite playlist on Spotify. Link it right there. Uh, we see them all, and we'll respond to you there too. Awesome. And the. Pool is closed and we're going to be announcing, verifying the answer and announcing the winner by email. So check it out because we're going to have five lucky person who's going to, like me, have a blinker and some tiger blood inside. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Casey, for organizing that. Thank you so much, Megan. Thank you guys that, again. That, that was amazing. I don't know again. Everyone for vibe, you know, I'll see you guys again soon. Yes. Thank you, Dustin. Always here for, to join. That's amazing. Bye bye. Yeah, I'll see you uh, Thanks, October 26th. Everyone. Appreciate you all. Thanks so much. Take care. Have a good night. Have a Thanks, good everybody. Thank Have a good one.